Live from New York, it's Ask This Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to Ask Engineer. As we do this every week, it's still me, Lady Ada, the engineer. And with me is Mr. Lady Ada. And you know what we're not? At CES, we're here at Ada Fruit instead, which is way more fun. And we can take showers, we don't have to walk around and wait for cabs in the cold. Um, you don't want to get a new 8K television? I also don't want to get the flu. <laughs> or an 8K television? <laughs> or an 8K rollable television. Or a foldable 8K television. Or a foldable t- television. Or an ultra it's black television. Or an OLED television. It's a big deal. Those are hot, the hottest gadgets this season. Wow. I want yeah. my Model M keyboard. Anyways, we've got an exciting show for you tonight. We're broadcasting live from the Adafruit headquarters, not in Vegas, here at uh, downtown Manhattan. We've got all the equipment behind us. We've got Blinka and the phone and snakes and all sorts of cool stuff that we would use to make and manufacture all the cool electronics. But tonight, we're going to spend the next hour talking about everything that's happening in the Maker and Adafruit community. Lots been going on. We're kicking off the new year. What's on tonight's show, Mr. Lee Data? On tonight's show, the code is Create with CN. We are celebrating Cartoon Network and Microsoft, Microsoft Make Code and Adafruit this week. So we'll be talking about that and more. But the code is Create with CN, and that's ten percent off everything except for gift certificates and Adabox, all the way up to eleven fifty nine p.m. tonight. Supports us, an open source hardware company here in New York City, manufacturing, sharing and paying people to do this thing called Adafruit here in the United States of America, New York City, USA. Show and tell, people around the world showing, sharing the projects. Get some amazing projects tonight. Lady will go over those and more. Pack the mailbag will stop by. We'll read your emails and more to us. Some Python and hardware news, tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff this week. Time travel, some current news. Look back in the world, hackers, makers, artists, engineers, and more. Help wanted, jobs.adafruit.com. We highlight and showcase some jobs and some skills that people have posted. Main New York City, some factory footage here from Adafruit. 3D printing, some videos from Nine Pedro. We've got some new products. we got some top secret, and we'll answer your questions. And we do that over on Discord, where we're almost up to 10,000 humans. So go over to adafruit.it slash Discord, and that's where we're at 24-7. Digital makerspace is maybe a good way to... And it's super fun. I pop in, you pop yeah. in once in a while. Leaks are sometimes dropped. Yep. It's a good idea. Make an account. Trivia Cast, we're going to give away something really cool tonight. All that and more on, you guessed it. Dun, dun, dun. That's an engineer. All okay. right. Okay. All right. So don't forget the code is create with CN. Uh, we will be talking about that more shortly. Lady Ada, there is some freebies. Um, we still have some left from the holidays. We just got a little bit left. What do people get when they put things in their cart? Good question. Yes, we don't have a ton more of some of these freebies, so now's a great time to place an order, and you can get free stuff for free that you don't have to pay for. If you order $99 or more, you get a free half-size Permaproto breadboard. Uh, that's a great PCB for taking your solderless breadboard projects and making them permanent. As you even saw one featured in that disc drum machine uh, that was used to hold all of the sensors in place. It's uh, just a wonderful, easy uh, PCB for all sorts of prototyping needs and a lot more durable than those kind of cheap phenolic ones. Um, 149 or more, you'll get a one of four different PCB coaster designs designed by uh, Boldport. Uh, Sar uh, designed these for us. Uh, we, we hired him to do so and he did an amazing job. Each one features Adabot with um, either Minerva, the LEDs, Hans, or Connie. No, I don't remember. And then um, a beautiful PCB art on either side with this like nice black mask around it, all in copper. Uh, with each order, you'll get one different one. So collect all four. One nine nine or more, you'll get free UPS ground shipping. That's uh, free continental ground US shipping in the lower forty eight. High quality, quality trackable shipping. It'll get there when it says it gets there. It doesn't go to the postal service. Uh, we recommend UPS ground, and you'll get that free shipping. And then $2.99 or more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express or Premier Learning Board for everybody from beginners to intermediates to experts to super, super experts. You can write code uh, and learn to program and build electronics using uh, Microsoft Make Code, which we'll talk about shortly. You can also use Circuit Python, uh, Python on Microcontroller, uh, Microblocks, or Arduino, or uh, Code.org, CS Discovery. So you have a lot of options and all these LEDs and sensors to make your dreams come true. Okie dokie, for shipping, US, we suggest EPS ground, trackable gets there 
on time, and you can see it postal if you're willing to wait a little bit, and occasionally it disappears and comes back. Um, DHL, that's great for international sales right through customs and more. So um, many options. Same day in New York City, just check out before 11 a.m. and you'll see the zip code. Okay, Lady Ada, we had a um, pretty packed show until it turned out to be a keyboard. Um, a keyboard party, keyboard. yeah. And then also we, we played some like live music. It was like a band formed. That's right. So um, we also had a Cartoon Network uh, project already. We did. That was pretty fast. Yeah, it was like hours. All right. Well, I'd love to talk about that. Okay. Okay, so on Show & Tell, yeah, it's the new year, so a lot of people coming back into town. Uh, you're going to see people start spinning up on all their projects. It's going to be a very exciting year. More electronics, more Python, more make code. Um, we had Erin come by. She just had a guide that went live this morning. It's uh, a, a um, make code um, dancing tutu. So you can use um, these NeoPixel dots. She's recommended I get these dots, and they, they're really easy to use. Um, and you have a little NeoPixel space to two inches apart. Um, wire that up to a Circuit Playground Express, which we just talked about, a great a learning board. And you can use make code drag and drop programming to make a tutu that reacts with different light effects when you dance. Um, and this is neat because we did, I was mentioning to her, we made a flora sparkle skirt many, many years ago, and yet to sew um, with conductive thread the NeoPixels on, it worked quite well. But for some people, even that sewing um, was a little bit too much uh, difficulty, acquired a lot of um, handwork. So this one's even easier than ever, no soldering and not even much sewing. So check that out. It's um, a very easy, reactive, um, dancing, sound reactive, sorry, a, a motion reactive tutu, or you can adapt into any kind of skirt or jacket that you like. It doesn't have to be a tutu, although, you know, ballerinas welcome. JP had, uh, uh, this week's project is a disc sequencer. You showed that little video. It, um, you can color in different squares on a spinning disc, and those will be sensed by um, a Feather M4 on a Cricut. Uh, that spins the disc around and it will play different drum sound effects. So it's like a, a sequencer, but it spins and you can change the speed. It's kind of like a cool demo effect. I've seen a bunch of these at the Media Lab. Uh, people built these and so I thought, yeah, this would be a cool project for us to remake, but with Cricut and show how easy it is to build with CircuitPython with the audio and sensing built in. He also previewed um, tomorrow's uh, workshop. JP's back in business tomorrow. Um, he's got a Microsoft XAC. It's an um, adaptive controller for Xbox. Um, he's going to be doing some cool Adafruit hacks. So if you want to make alternative game interfaces or assistive technology for playing games, uh, we're going to show how you can do so using the Microsoft Adaptive Controller. And no soldering, just a little bit of putting stuff together and uh, Adafruit parts, and you can build quite a few cool projects. Mike Barella came by, showed off a Cherry MX keyboard from 1986. It was a, a project he built with the 6800, 68,000 Motorola chipset. This is like before the Mac even picked it. He was building projects with it, and uh, he has his old Cherry MX keyboard. And maybe he said next week he might uh, show the wire wrapped uh, Motorola 68,000 project that he built. Known Pedro. Uh, you know, they were here last week. It was awesome. Now they're back at home. Uh, so they get to finally show off their 3D ball drop uh, in person. So they actually got to demo it. Um, it's beautiful. It looks just like the New York uh, Times Square ball. We saw that on TV. But maybe you don't want to travel to New York and wait like nine hours in the cold and not be able to pee and like. I'm convinced the one in Times Square is a hoax. And it's actually a very small one. You think they just zoom in? That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, you can just 3D print your own. And Nick, you have it. No, I saw this YouTube video that it's. I'm a. You're I'm a, a truther. I'm a ball. I'm a yeah. I'm ball, a ball drop, drop truther. truther yeah. Ball drop truther. Okay. Well, check out Noah Pedro's project. It's really beautiful. Um, it uses uh, Feather and Circuit Python to play different audio effects. Again, like all these projects that have audio can only be done uh, really with Circuit Python. It makes it so easy. And then NeoPixels and uh, robotics. So an epic project to uh, end out the year. And then. Scott came by. He also was, uh, he turned into a pumpkin. Those are his words uh, for the last couple of weeks. And he's back and he's ready to party with a Model M keyboard that he found for $1.50. So he's got, he's got a keyboard, which is what kind of kicked off this keyboard party. And um, he also uh, wanted to announce that he's done a pull request for CircuitPython MIDI support. And a lot of people wanted USB MIDI support in CircuitPython. Well, guess what? Pull request is in. If anybody out there is interested in, um, doing USB MIDI projects with CircuitPython. I, this is the perfect time to jump in. And uh, he even offered a bounty of some keycaps, maybe, if you're interested. Or you could just do it with the knowledge that you've contributed to the CircuitPython community. 
Um, and we had a couple guests. Those are from Adafruit folks just c catching us up on what they did. Um, we had uh, from the Hogan family, um, a young lady showed off her cool princess bubble gum temperature sensor. So it, at school, they don't go out to recess if it's under 20 degrees, um, which is kind of horrifying. <laughs> they could get that cold. But uh, so she made a temperature sensor using a lily pad and um, maybe some NeoPixels or LEDs, and it's a princess bubble gum, and she smiles when the temperature is above 20, so they can go out to recess, and uh, princess bubble gum frowns when the temperature is below 20, which means they have to stay in. But then maybe, you know, it's happy sometimes because, you know, you can work on your electronics projects. And she also built a Jake the Potato project uh, that we had on, um, we'll talk about that, the, the Create with Cartoon Network um, guides and uh, uh tutorials that we've been launching with Cartoon Network. So she already built Jake the Potato. Uh, it looks amazing. Uh, and Jake counts down and you have to pass the potato. Um, so keep Jake hopping. He looked pretty happy. And uh, we also had Roberto who's been making music with the Rainmaker. It's like filled with little beads and he's using OpenSCAD to make custom uh, Rainmaker um, shaky things. And um, he tried a couple different ones and it was kind of cool. Like these are four or five different iterations using OpenSCAD and different uh, settings and features to make the perfect uh, rainmaker that's all 3D printed. Okay. All participants on the show and tell get a nice on the show and tell sticker. Email supportedatafruit.com. We will send you out one if you're a kid, have your parents email. Next up, uh, part of our Adafruit live series of shows. JP is tomorrow, Thursday. Um, we opened up the show with this. Yes, it's cool. You can see those little five sensors and the disc, and when the, the uh, mark, the black mark is reflected, um, it plays a note, and when there are white papers underneath and they're not detected, then it doesn't play anything. That's tomorrow. So. Uh, mailbag. Sorry, that's that's the guy that's live. Tomorrow is the XAC. Oh, right. Sorry. Sorry. That that's was last week. Yeah, yeah. That was last week. This is this week. <laughs> okay. Uh, we read these at our all-company meeting called Stay of the Fruit. We also read these here. Last couple weeks, I placed a couple huge orders from you guys. Just wanted to say the quality is a million percent. Out of every item, after assembly, everything was 100% working without a single defect or problem. Not to mention the massive library of tutorials available for every product. I want to say thank you for being an awesome company that can always rely on. Thank you for your unmatched quality and look forward to years more great products. Mario. Thanks, Mario. Thank you. One million percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, don't forget adafruit.it slash discord. You know, we only have like... 40 or 50 more people we need to get to 10,000. So if you haven't... Humans, yeah. join in the party. Yeah. It's a good time. People helping each other, chat and sharing projects. Yeah. Um, every week, JP does a Make Code Minute, and this is one of the latest ones. He also has one tomorrow, so take it away, JP. That's right. It's the Make Code Minute. And look... This is make code and I'm right inside the make code. So for today's make code minute, what I'd like to do is talk about using an external NeoPixel strip on the Circuit Playground Express in make code in order to graph the light level in the room or as you cover up the light sensor. Uh, so here you can see in my make code session, what I have is an on start block where I set a strip to uh, a NeoPixel strip on pin A3 that has 30 pixels. If you're wondering where that is, just click on this category called light, and then this NeoPixel category shows up. And right there, we have set strip to, and it defaults to A1. I'm moving it to A3, just for fun. So I've got that in my start loop, and then in my forever loop, what I've got is, again, under light, NeoPixel, I'm setting a strip graph, and it defaults to say zero, and then you can add more things to it. All I'm doing is adding, instead of that zero, I'm graphing in a light level. I got that from input, and if we scroll down in input, you'll see light level. So with that running on the board, check it out. I'm gonna take this strip of NeoPixels and wear them like a proud bandolier and try to get out from under the make code. And then you can see, as I block the light on my Circuit Playground Express, we are graphing that lightness value up and down the strip. So you can make that sound reactive, use a potentiometer, there's lots of ways to do it, but this is a really quick and easy way to do a reactive prop using Circuit Playground Express running make code. And that is 
today's Make Code Minute. Okay, and if you haven't already and you have a Circuit Playground Express, go to makecode.adafruit.com, plug it in, try it out, fun things to do. Uh, uh, LEDs, buttons, noises, yep. I mean, you can jump in in five minutes and have a good time. Okay. Welcome to the wonderful world of Python on Hardware. Yeah, Python on Hardware. This is a new year. Yep. And uh, we got a lot of good stuff going on and coming up. Yeah, so right now, if you go to our blog, we have a series of posts. And these are people that are sending things in for CircuitPython 2019. So if you want to give us feedback, let us know what's important to you. Uh, we're posting up all of those right now. You can look for the tag CircuitPython 2019 on our blog. And uh, Matt just sent in one, Pendant Software sent in one, Cedar Grove, um, Entol, uh, and we have the original blog post. So these are all things that um, we know that you might be interested in, and we also want to hear from you. So that's in... Um, we put it in the newsletter, mm -hmm. it's on the blog, lots of places to see it, you can tag it, and of course, Pound Circuit Python yeah. 2019, people have been putting it up on GitHub. Wherever it takes, if you comment on the blog post, of course we'll see it immediately, yeah. but just tag us somehow, let us know. Yep. Um, we are really excited to hear what the community has to say, it's all about code plus community. Yep. So you know, we, there's code being written, but we also want to make sure that we have people who are part of the community, who are contributing and feel like they can tell us what they think is important, and we do listen to it. Even if we don't get absolutely every wish done this year, um, it's all going to be on our list and we'll get to it eventually. Uh, over the weekend, we had some e-ink stuff. This is um, person in a JSON file. This is the quotes on Adafruit, and uh, we did a little video, so past us can can tell you what. Yeah, explain it past me. What is this? Hey, working on some e-ink displays. We've had this little e-ink in the display in the store before, and I thought let's make some bigger ones. So here I'm actually doing a demo with a 2.13 inch display where I'm hooking it up to a Feather M4. And uh, this is the 2.13 inch tricolor e-ink display. It's got some graphics. And then it's getting quotes from the Adafruit quote service online using this ESP32 to connect to Wi-Fi. So this is going to the Adafruit site, getting a quote, and then displaying it nicely on an e-ink display. So we've got a couple more e-inks coming out and we've got CircuitPython support for them. Uh, here's some of the other ones. And so that live version is using um, JSON and it's mm -hmm. um, CircuitPython and it's displaying quotes right off of our site. Yeah, and you can see the nice tri-color. It's got some red and black in addition to the white background. And uh, we've got text and graphics working. Okay. Cool stuff. Ink snakes its way into CircuitPython. Nothing looks better on e-ink than my Angelou quotes. Um, this is the testers for the Grand Central. Yeah, look at this massive tester. You need two clamps because it's just so big. Yeah, and this is our most powerful Python running board. It's a mega shaped and it's a at SAMD51. It's got 51. 70 pins. Um, it's in the store now. We actually sold up pretty fast, but we're making more. You know, this is um, a bit of a challenge for us to make. I mean, it's not that it's a big board, that the size doesn't matter, but that chip in the center is 128 pins and it's 0.4 millimeter pitch. So uh, it's definitely our mo most advanced uh, board that we've ever put together, but we got the first batch out and we're gonna be making more. Yeah. So if you want a lot of pins and a lot of power, check out this Grand Central. The Cortex M4 core, 120 megahertz, DSP and floating point, one megabyte flash, 256 kilobyte RAM, 32 bit, 3.3 uh, volts logic and 70 GPIO pins. This is a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I can't, I can't cram any more in. Okay, it's the fastest way to run CircuitPython right now. Okay, uh, this is a coming soon. This is a GPIO expander bond. It'll be CircuitPython yeah, support. Yeah, somebody emailed us and said, hey, could you make one? And I was like, well, that's a good idea. Why yep. not? Just whipped it together. Some projects around the web. This is a CircuitPython powered campfire lamp. It's uh, a little cup with some uh, like tissue paper and just using CircuitPython. You can make a, a little accessory. It won't keep you warm. Well, I mean, it'll keep your heart warm because yeah. it's heartwarming to make such a thing. But it's also safe. You don't have to worry about it catching fire. Um, some other news around the, the Python world. Uh, this is EduBlocks, and EduBlocks has a new Python editor feature, and this also works on mobile devices. So what you're seeing is EduBlocks on an iPad, and you put all the blocks, and once you decide that you're ready to run this, it runs it. It uses um, a service called Trinket, um, no connection to ours, um, our hardware. Um, it just happens to be called Trinket, and uh, you can use Circuit 
Python and our circuit playground boards with this. Yeah, so very this interesting. Is, yeah, so this is coming soon. Also, other ways to run CircuitPython. This is, um, we uh, wrote about this, this is a Visual Studio um, that uh, Scott Hasselman yeah, on they how got, to use Visual Studio with CircuitPython and uh, Neotrellis. Yeah, he got an Ada box, and I guess uh, he works on VS Code and was like, you know, we use, I've used Atom, but some people want other editors, so he showed here's how you can use a different editor, and it, it looks like there's even a serial console built into it. So this is going to be a really um, a really nice way to write code, so check it out. If people like it, maybe we'll um, I'll switch over to VS Code. Okay. Um, next up, this is kind of a neat thing. This is a uh, user interface to look at and control how you... Um, user Neo Trellis. So this was from, um, let me find it here. This is one from uh, Foamy Guy, and mm -hmm. this is a Neo Trellis M4 uh, Launchpad conf configurator. Yeah, I mean, it's super. What's really nice is because it's in CircuitPython, of course, you can generate a text file and just copy and paste it in. But, like, if you want to make a pretty advanced setup and you don't want to read through, you know, a Python dictionary, then yep. yeah, it's a nice accessory. Thank you so much for making that. This is LED light drawing using CircuitPython on Neo Trellis. We have Colorful. an updated guide in NRF52840 from Lady Ada. Yeah, we've updated it. I think we've added how to update. Uh, if you have a particle xenon or argon board, you want to get CircuitPython running on that, um, check out the guide. We have a little bit of a tutorial on how to do so. Mike Rilla did a roundup of all the ways and things that have gone on with Python and Turtle. So uh, kind of a surprise to us. It was neat to see that Turtle is inside of Moo, um, our favorite editor, Code with Moo. And you can easily learn some fun graphic drawing things with Turtle, and we have a little bit of history on that. Uh, we also post up, uh, we have, we're on Reddit, um, CircuitPython community is already up to 100 people already. It's only been around there for a week, and that is just one of the many community resources that we have. Um, this is part of the Adafruit newsletter. This comes out every week, adafruitdaily.com, spam free. It's uh, one of the biggest resources for Python on hardware out there. And Python in general. And Python in general. We, we put a lot of stuff in there. And that's the Python on hardware news for the week. Exciting. Yeah, a lot happened. A lot. Ton. Okay, time travel. The time travel, sometimes we look to the past, and then sometimes we look to the future, and then sometimes we're just stuck here in the present. Okay. <laughs> and all that's pretty deep. Yeah. Um, but this is a little bit of both. So on Monday at CES, uh, this is the big announcement. Yay! Cartoon Network, make code. And Adafruit. Microsoft. We all teamed up, and this is live. So you can go to createwithcn.com, and these are all the resources and more. Um, you'll notice makecode.adafruit.com looks a little bit different. It's the Cartoon Network characters. Yay! And Princess Bubblegum! Yeah. And, Gumball! Uh, we have uh, LA Times wrote about this. Um, it's on Microsoft's site. And this is um, a series of projects. It's... Um, a very forward-looking way to get more kids into computer science. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the cool things that Cartoon Network did is they said, if you, you know, if you love your brand, set it free. If you love your IP, set it mm -hmm. free. So uh, kids can remix and do all sorts of things with the Cartoon Network characters and learn how to code at the same time. Yes, and we have a lot of projects that you know there you can print out, um, you know, custom graphics that they've designed or, or, or given to us that we can make. And it's all got the blessing of Cartoon Network. They're really into it, and they're, they're going to be um, adding some more videos and guides and maybe doing more. But it's all about, like, you know, kids and even adults, they're already in love with these characters. They, they love to cosplay these, these characters. They love to draw um, their own animations or comics or write stories about them. Well, let's build some electronics. Let's build something creative and fun that lights up or makes sounds or, or reacts to temperature or light and motion. Um, so that's where Circuit Playground Express comes in. You know, I think it's it's great for people who want to make creative and colorful projects. And so it's a great partnership with Cartoon Network. And of course, MakeCode is the engine that makes this all possible. I mean, the, the ease of use and the flexibility and the power of MakeCode from Microsoft um, lets us basically build anything. So as we were coming up with projects, it was like, we can do that, we can do that, we can do that, all of it was possible. Yeah. And uh, we have a, a video, we have, I want to show some short videos and then we'll show a longer video and we're going to continue to do a lot of projects. So um, get ready. This is a, a big, a big year and a big thing for Microsoft, Make Code, Cartoon Network, Adafruit. Um, this is a really neat partnership that gets kids who are interested in these characters and these stories and these universe and the adventures. And then also combine that with something like 
coding and learning. And it's not just, you know, we are not the only people who have to, I mean, make code is contributing to Cartoon Network. We are. But, you know, if you're watching and you have your own favorite um, Cartoon Network character, it doesn't have to be one of these four. It can be any any character or any show or anything. And you want to make a project, do so and post it up. And, you know, we'll blog it and we'll share it. And, like, let's all start making and making really fun, creative cosplay and, and interactive art using these characters. So here's some examples. And then we'll play a slightly longer video after I show some of the shorter ones. In this project, we'll show you how to build a coffee cup lamp using Adafruit Circuit Playground and Microsoft MakeCode. Design your own lamp out of a paper cup and use capacitive touch to change the colors of the LEDs. You can build your own capacitive touch pads using copper tape. So get ready to go on an adventure and learn how to craft your own paper cup lamp. Get the parts to build this project, links are in the description. Program your Circuit Playground Express using code blocks in Microsoft MakeCode. Drag and drop to create interactive lights that change colors by using the sensors and inputs on board the Circuit Playground. Get inspired to make paper crafts of your favorite characters and build a scene straight out of the tree fort. Start by crafting your paper cup to create a window cutout. A piece of paper will help diffuse the LEDs to illuminate the cup. Tape the paper window inside and place your assets however you want. You can give it that 3D effect by making things pop out. Stick the Circuit Playground Express to the cup's lid using double stick foam tape. This roll of copper tape works nicely with the pads on the Circuit Playground. Build your own traces and route your connections so they're on the outside of the lid. Play with different code blocks, materials, and colors to build your very own coffee cup lamp. So how would you build yours? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. Okay, so check out makecode.adafruit.com and then special thanks to um, some folks at Cartoon Network, uh, Jennifer, Tessie, Deborah, uh, Melissa Today, who I was corresponding with, um, Jill, who's uh, the VP of uh, of I think all the programming and uh, marketing there. Also Jacqueline at Microsoft MakeCode, Pelly, Tom, that entire crew. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting someone. There's so many people. But this was a big effort and uh, thank you so much. This is this is neat. I, it's cool to see um, well-known brands and characters and these entire worlds unlocked into the world of the imagination for a young person who wants to also learn coding mm -hmm. in some way. And make code is the easiest way. You can start out with blocks, then you go to JavaScript, and that's a, there's a ton of good projects to start off with, and you can keep making more. Okay. All right, jobs at Adafruit.com. We had a bunch of jobs. I want to do a recap because they've um, they've been up there for a couple weeks, and it was over the holidays. Mm -hmm. So if you go to jobs at Adafruit.com, here's the cool companies that have posted stuff. So um, there's Patcher.io. There's MCCI Corp. They're doing some cool FPGA stuff and circuit. Laura stuff yeah, too. Quip. Yeah. Um, Hackaday is looking for a community manager. DNA Lounge is looking for a social media content manager. And Raspberry Pi Foundation is looking for a club coordinator and a club growth manager. So, so if you run like a, you know, if you're, you're building stuff, you've written code, or maybe you run a makerspace or run workshops, you know, this these could be 
some really fun jobs let you do what you love to do. Yeah. And with the really great partners, I mean, like these are some of the coolest, most wonderful uh, companies in the maker community. So, yep. okay. Go, um, go for it. And Apply. If you, yeah, and also go to jobs.adafruit.com. Post your skills. If you are someone who has skills and you want to work for a cool company, a lot of companies look for people who are posting your skills there. And if you're a company, of course, post your job openings there. We don't charge anything. We do moderate them and make sure there's no spam or anything weird. Um, that's our free service that we're doing for everyone. So enjoy it. Okay. Uh, Lay Data, we're an open source hardware company. We are. You know, I do want to say something about oh, open source hardware. Oh, boy. Now here it comes. No, it's not that. Okay. <laughs> um, but there, there is something very unique, just speaking of the Cartoon Network thing. Yeah. So Adafruit does open source. We do. Okay. When we worked with Microsoft, we said, hey, is make code open source? And they said yes. It is. Circuit Playground, the board, open source. is open source. And then Circuit Car Python. Yeah, too. Circuit Python is open, open source. source. And then Cartoon Network is putting out their IP in a way for kids or anyone to use. So this is a big deal. It's about I mean, besi sharing. Besides it being like a U.S. company and like lady owned and all this stuff and, and all that. Like yeah. this is very unique and it's so weird. Sometimes it's hard for, for the, the, the newspapers or the media to understand. Like this is very unique and weird. Yeah, this is, this is cool and it's special and we're actually doing it. Yeah. I mean, like it's happening. You know, we're, we're loan free, VC free. We just, we're, we do it every day. Yeah. Like, the, like the, the, we're at this scale. You know, it'd be like if Disney all of a sudden decided to do like open source with Martha Stewart. Like it's like that, you know, like, wait, what? Like, yeah. And so we're, we're, you know, we're in the technology world. So I, I think it's going to take a little bit for people to, to realize how big of a deal this is, but this is like, there's only so many people doing things like this and uh, good work. Circuit, circuit playground was something that was really important to us. We did it together. Us. Yeah. But good work because you made something open. And then when we work with people, they want to work in an open way and then that attracted a cool organization like Cartoon Network who wanted to do stuff in an open way yeah, so it works people can even go and watch we did you know a, a video series with Digikey on Maker.io yeah. on how we designed the circuit playground you're like wondering like where did this all come from we, we should start to finish start to finish 10 part series of me designing the whole thing and how it happened so check that out yeah so the more you give uh, the more you get back that's right it is a fact the Beatles we were have right. 1,704 tutorials, Lady Ada, what's on Boom. a big board? Boom, all right, so we start off, we have the guide for this, um, the Feather NRF52840 that came out last week, so um, we're making those around the clock. Sign up, um, if you haven't gotten one yet, we'll be making tons more. We've got two projects from Deno. We've got um, this beautiful Skyline project using a Circuit Playground Express and our NeoPixel with alligator clips. Um, this is a really fun add-on that requires no soldering. You can add um, LED strips. And um, we saw somebody make a Skyline project. We're like, oh, yeah, we should do that. So um, here's one, I think, of the Seattle Skyline. Do you want to show the little video? We have a little mini. So this is New York, and it can react to light, so it can get darker and lighter. It can also react to temperature, and you can also have it just on a, a plain, you know, uh, sunrise, sunset type um, repeated um, uh, lighting. So you know, you can have a couple different ways you could take this project, and we have uh, printouts that you can print. You can see you tape them and cut them out um, to make a beautiful skyline and make one of your own city. We have a uh, Seattle and um, New York. We also have. The, um, the Circuit Playground Express uh, talking stick. This actually is cool because it uses it's the first project that uses the Circuit Playground Express case that we've made. Um, it snaps in, and um, this is something that comes up. Sometimes you're in meetings and you want to make sure that you get to the meeting in time, and how do you, you know, make sure that everyone speaks and then you know, gives up the um, right to speak when they, they are, they're done? I've got something important to say, and I'm going to say it, and then... I'm going to point out some facts and everything. I don't know. He's, <laughs> like, then, he's just like, I got things to say. Yeah, and then, so, then you go back to the other version. So, you know, this is basically uses the, the built-in LEDs to make a timer. It goes around, and then it gives you, you know, one minute or 30 seconds or two minutes, whatever you want per person. And when um, it runs out of time, it starts beeping, and so you know it's time to hand it off to the next person. When they shake it, it'll reset. So it's a very handy, um, you know, meeting hot potato, t totem, talking stick, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, you can build your own. Uh, it could be very handy. Okay. Um, we've got this beautiful nano ring. I think this showed up on um, Show and Tell. We're like, that's so beautiful. It's uh, I think it's by Amelia, mm -hmm. and um, she soldered together these little neo pixels and then made a, a silicone wire chain to a bracelet with a gemma on it. Um, it's just a gorgeous project, and and it has that 
Neopixel jewelry without having this weird thing that you have to attach to yourself that looks clunky. It looks very elegant. It's a very nice um, version of the Neopixel LED uh, ring. So check that out if you'd like to build it. And uh, she did the code in Arduino, CircuitPython, and MakeCode. So no matter what your expertise level, we have code for it for the Gemma M0, which is pretty sweet using Maker. Um, we've got the um, uh, Adventure Time lamp, cup lamp that we showed the video for just now. Davis Stelz wrote um, a library and guide about debouncing inputs. Uh, this is something you have to do when you have buttons, especially if you have a fast processor um, and you the buttons, they, they mechanically they bounce. And so you have to debounce them by taking a couple readings uh, to verify that the button really is pressed or released and not just bouncing around. Um, so he wrote a library and a guide and talks about it and talks about you know, how he structured this library and also when you might want to use it for sensor inputs as well. So it's an overall very handy library. We've used it in a couple projects. We've got um, the JP uh, project, the um, spinning disk sequencer, which we showed the little video for, so you know all about that. Um, super fun project to make a sound effects uh, using Cricut to rotate this disk and then trigger up to four drum samples. And uh, finally today we got Aaron's uh, motion reactive light tutu using NeoPixels guide out. Uh, so if you wanna make a skirt that reacts to motion and is fun to wear, Cool, cool little mini gif here from her. And we also have a video we can show maybe part of it. I'm just going to show some of it because it's about five minutes long. It's very detailed, but it's yeah. great for beginners. We're going to show just a couple seconds of it. Not want to build that. Everybody should like just go build that right now. She can be just like Erin. She's so happy. Okay. And that's the guys we had this week. All right. So I'm in New York City factory footage. Take it away, factory. places fall asleep to or wake up to every single night here in New York City. A beautiful yeah. time-lapse mm -hmm. sunset of New York City. City never sleeps, but the picking places do. Yeah.
Like the traffic just, it gets even more busy. Yeah. The last scene from The Doors. I'm expecting, like, L.A. Woman to play. <laughs> um, okay. So here is just a reminder, because we spent a lot of time on this. So Adafruit.io, it's our IoT service for makers. Um, we have tons of resources. The hardware works with it. Unlike every other IoT service, we're not going to sunset it, because you have a way to help support it. Um, you can now get a year pass. And it's a cool card. So, of course, you don't need to get the card. You can just yeah, order online. It just helps. But if you want, we can send you this really cool holographic card. Yeah. You can redeem it for one full year. Um, it's a big discount from by month to month. Yep. And we have a lot more services and updates coming. So a lot of the new cool stuff will be IO plus only. Yep. Yeah, we always have a free tier. We'll always do that. That was our promise. It's on video, so I can't like change No, that. we'll always have a free tier. Yeah. But if you want like, you know, more data, more feeds, like the Dark Sky API, all that good stuff. Yeah. IO plus where's that? So, and we have a really good data policy, all that stuff. So if you like things like, if you like see this in the world, support it with your pass. Um, next up, 3D printing. Um, we're gonna keep moving because we have some new products to do. This is the sped up because we did a 3D printing video. Yep. Um, the Cartoon Network one with Don Pedro. Here is a sped up video. forget every single Wednesday 3D Hangouts with Noah Pedro and you'll see how to make all this stuff and more. Um, before we go on the new products idea, let's do the code. Great with CN. That's right. 10% off your order including all the things you're about to see. That's right. Okay, ready? Yep. <laughs> new, 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 new. Yeah. It's a train whistle. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. The, hol All right. the holodeck malfunction, there is a train that just came through here. Okay, yeah, let's uh, kick this off. All right, let's kick it off. Okay, so we got a whole bunch more particle boards. We had the kits before and some of the packs. Now we have the individual boards. So this is the particle mesh argon. It's uh, the new particle board series. This one comes with the NRF52840. It's a Bluetooth LE pl mesh plus Wi-Fi chip. So you see there's two antenna spots, one for Wi-Fi and one for Bluetooth. Um, so this board is the BLE plus Wi-Fi, sorry, the mesh plus Wi-Fi chip. And if you noticed, it's Feather compatible. Um, the new particle boards are all compatible with the Feather standard. All Feather all the time. All Feather all the time. So if you want to uh, use the new particle mesh with their like awesome um, online system, their IoT system for managing data and their mesh networking stuff, you can use that with our hardware. Another good example, if you do open source and you do a good job, the standards um, kind of just happen. Now Feather is open standard. People can use it. You'll see lots and lots of feather board. Speaking of. Speaking board. of, here's another one. We've got the Boron LTE. This is the cellular enabled one. So it's got an NRF52840 again in that feather form factor. But on the bottom, it's got a cellular module. It's an LTE module. And uh, I believe Particle is the, uh, the virtual network for it. And it's in the US right now. Um, check the Particle page to um, see if that's been updated. Because I know that they're doing some stuff on launch and they'll do stuff later. So this is LTE. Um, which is the you know the new uh, uh, IoT cellular network? Um, it's more modern than 2G and 3G. Make sure you've got coverage in your area, but uh, it's more futuristic. You know, eventually 2G and 3G will be sunsetted. LTE is going to be here for quite a long time. So if you can use it, use this for cellular. And this is the Xenon. So this is the kind of the, the most bare bones one. It only has the NRF52840. Um, again, still feather shaped. It's using their mesh network. Um, uh, you can use it with their cloud system, and of course, you can use the Wi-Fi or cellular uh, boards that we just shown with these to create advanced mesh networks that send data through a gateway um, using the onboard radio. So, 
all these particle boards. You know, we have a, also a bunch of kits. Yeah, um, want to get to those? Cause we yeah, have, let's get... Because we have... The, I'm putting these in order. So we have these packs, and then we have another board. I know. We have so many. Okay, I think so we just, we'll just kind of talk about them as a group. Um, we have a pack. I believe this is the boron uh, LTE pack. Um, so you get one boron... Sorry. We get one boron LTE, which is your network gateway, and then you get two xenons. So you have, like, you know, three boards. Two of them are in a mesh network. A third is receiving from that mesh network as well and uploading to cellular. And, of course, you get breadboards and cables and battery pack. Um, another pack. This is a kit. I think this is also the Boron LTE. Comes with battery, breadboard, antenna, kind of everything you want. So the, the previous ones we showed were just the boards, the very bare bones. But you know, if you want to get started quickly, you want to come with an LED, with a sensor, um, with a battery and antenna. Um, you get these little kits. They're a little, a couple dollars more, but you'll get um, going much faster. And then here. And is this the is the Boron 2G, 3G. So in addition to the LTE, you might be in an area or in a country where you don't have LTE um, cellular access. The Boron 2G, 3G um, has a U-block cellular modem that works on 2G or 3G, either one network. So it's much more universal and a lot more places have that. Um, I will say 2G is you know, kind of being sunsetted. It's still available, but there's no promise. 3G is around for quite a while. Again, if you can do LTE, do it. But if you can't, 2G, 3G are a really good cellular network alternative. Okay. So all of those together, they all work with each other. You can mix and match them, you know, add cellular, add Wi-Fi, make a mesh network. Uh, this is, you know, the new particle offering. Very exciting to see it from them. And of course, it works with all of our feathered boards. Mixed up. Okay, this is an add-on for the Pi Club board, which is not feather compatible. It looks kind of similar though. Um, this is the Pi Scans, a, a sensor and RFID NFC board uh, for the, all the PyCom modules. So these are like MicroPython, Python, ESP32 based boards um, from the PyCom, which is different than PyCon. It's PyCon with an M. Um, so yeah, this one has uh, battery charging, serial, uh, I think accelerometer, light sensor. Um, but most interesting is it has an RFID and NFC chip. And so uh, that little green thing, that's an NFC antenna. You can plug that in so you can have it react to cards or tags um, or do other RFID NFC stuff using this extra chip. Okay. This is an updated product, but it's updated enough I wanted to mention it. This is uh, more MicroPython. You know, this is the MicroPython a trend. LCD add-on for the Pi board. Um, and, you know, you can see here it has a, a TFT screen. I think it's 1.8 inch. 1.6 inch with a resistive touchscreen. Um, but if you notice, it looks kind of similar from the top. It works just the same. But if you look on the bottom, there's these two uh, SMD connectors. Um, so this, I believe, is going to be compatible with the upcoming um, D series. So they kind of updated this in preparation for that. And it's also apparently a little bit faster. Okay. If, if for some reason you missed out on the last Adabox 10, uh, the Rainbow Trellis, and you're just like, man, I really wish I'd picked that up. You can now. We have a couple of Ada boxes in the store. You don't get free shipping. You don't get some of the extras. Um, you don't get the secret delivered to your door the moment it comes out. So you have to wait a while. But you can pick it up. Uh, and then, of course, don't forget to subscribe to Ada Box. You'll get all the goodies from now going forward. But um, this uh, Rainbow Trellis gets you a Circuit Python board with four by uh, eight. Um, squishy elastomer buttons. Uh, we had tons of great projects, music uh, projects, um, keyboard projects, lighting, um, all sorts of good stuff from uh, this Ada box. So this was definitely the best ever. Um, subscribe to get the next one, which you'll also love, and then pick this one up if you missed it. Got a couple of JST four pin and three pin cables. Um, these are pretty quick, so you know we'll just go through them. This is a four pin JST to alligator clip. So you can see he's got black, red, white, green. Um, and you can use it to attach uh, some of our boards that have JST 4-pin stem connectors to something like a Circuit Playground Express or maybe a micro bit. We also have a version that's the matching polarity. So this is a socket and it has wires on the ends. This is for more for people who are like, I wanna make some custom uh, jig or attach to that alligator clip cable. We just thought this would be handy. We've been building some projects that'd be useful so you can meet with JST 4-pin connectors. And we also have these in three pin cable type. So this one is a uh, power ground signal, three pin socket. And um, we also have the alligator clip version of this as well. We've also got an update for the Pimeroni uh, PiCade console. So, you know, they have the all in one arcade one that's like got the screen, everything built in, but maybe you just want to run it on your own TV. Um, we'll say just a nice rugged DIY build, uh, no soldering required. 
Um, you got uh, six buttons at top, a joystick, two buttons on the side, an on-off switch. You pop in a Raspberry Pi 3, and uh, it mounts nicely. You attach everything together using their hat um, to, to add uh, audio effects, as well as um, all the buttons and joystick and all that good stuff. Plug it in, put it together, and now you can you know play RetroPie on any TV screen you've got. All you need to add is a Raspberry Pi SD card and an HDMI cable. I also got uh, just a, a quickie. Uh, this is the uh, Feather M0 Wi-Fi. We had a couple with some um, stacking header solder on, so we thought we'd pop them in the shop. If you don't want to solder on headers, you want to get started with Feather uh, and the M0 Wi-Fi. This is a, a great board to um, do wireless projects with. We, we like the M0. It's a nice rugged chip. Um, this is supported in Arduino. It doesn't have CircuitPython support, but in Arduino it works quite well. Okay. And the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, in our community is... Thank you, uh, Conductor Phil. It's I'm the engineer and you're the conductor. We've got the Grand Central. I'm actually just shovel coal. <laughs> it's true. Coming into town. Well, that's why the board's black, right? Uh, coming into town, we got the Grand Central. We've been teasing this for a while, and we wanted to you know, get it out into the world. So we, we made a small batch, and we had some beta users pick some up. We're going to be making more. Uh, but it definitely, they are being made, and, and we'll, we'll, we're notifying groups of people who've signed up. Uh, we, we couldn't notify all, like, 1,000 of you because there would have been a, a very unhappy people because we only had, like, 50 boards to, to launch. But we're going to be making hundreds and thousands more, so we're just getting started. Uh, just letting you know that, if you're wondering why it's out of stock. Um, so the Grand Central M4, maybe we'll um, go to the overhead because this is a pretty epic board here. So, um, yeah, so it's... It's the largest Circuit Python compatible board we've got. It's also one of the largest um, Arduino compatible board we've made. It features the Sandy 51. Um, it's a 120 megahertz processor, Cortex M4. It's got like DSP instructions and random number generators and, and a cache. Um, it's a really wonderful chip. It's got one megabyte of flash, 256K of RAM. So it it's just can do anything, really. You stuff any data you want in RAM, and you can process it quite fast. Um, the SAMD21 didn't make a chip with this many pins, so we couldn't make a mega-shaped one. Only the SAMD51 finally came out with a 128-pin chip, which we needed. We needed that many pins to have all the pins do something. So we've got 70 GPIO total. Uh, we've got 16 analog inputs, two analog outputs. Um, Tons of timers, PWMs. I think it's got eight circoms. So you can have eight I squared C, I SPI, and UART connections. You put eight megabytes of SPI flash on there, which you can use in Arduino or in CircuitPython to hold your code. There's a debugging uh, port right here if you want to uh, connect your JLink or um, Atmel ICE. Micro SD, a uh, micro USB for um, data upload and debugging. You got your standard, you know, five to twelve volt. Uh, DC jack and we added an on off switch so you can easily turn it on or off. We had a little bit of space so we thought we'd add a SD card. You know a lot of people use these large boards for driving uh, CNC devices or 3D printers and so having an SD card slot could be really handy for storing files on it. Built in NeoPixel for status, um, LEDs as usual, power supply as usual, and just like a ton of pins. Um, it's a 3 volt uh, logic board so it's not going to be a perfect drop-in replacement for a Mega, but, you know, given that the Dewey didn't, you know, really quite launch very well, and, and I don't, that it had a bunch of problems. I never got I2C working very well on the Dewey. We think that this is kind of the next step up from a Mega. So if you, you know, you like the Mega, but you're like, well, I want more and I want it faster, because the Mega was only running at 16 megahertz, so this is running at 120. Um, and it's got caching, and it's, it's just super, super fast, and that's not even including all, all the extra Cortex-M4 speedups that it's got. It's, it's just blazing fast, and uh, you get now all the pins to use with it. So we've got CircuitPython and Arduino support for this. Um, even though it seems like a really big deal, it's just a really big Metro M4, and we've had that out for you know at least six months. So we're kind of excited to see what we'll do with it. Um, you know, it's got this beautiful silk screen on the back, this is the, um, the ceiling of Grand Central Station. So if you go to New York uh, and you go through Grand Central, if you look at, at the top of the roof of Grand Central, you'll see um, this graphic, which Philby has adapted for um, the Grand Central silkscreen. Got that train theme, but it's just, it's just grand and it's yeah. central. So toot toot, check it out. 
We're making lots more. It's very exciting. Um, we'll, we'll definitely be in the next couple of weeks. We'll be putting lots more in stock. Uh, this is beta. Um, we've already found a couple little silkscreen bugs that we want to fix. Um, but, you know, I think the hardware's pretty good. So try it out. Maybe build a 3D printer with it or a CNC and let us know how it goes. Okay. Honk it. Want to do a recap? Yeah. New, new, <laughs> coming to town. We got a whole bunch of particle boards. We got the particle argons, the NRF52840 plus Wi Fi. Uh, we got the individual board. We also have the particle uh, boron LTE, which is NRF52840 plus LTE cellular modem. We also have a couple of packs. We got the xenon, which is, which is just the NRF52840. We've got an LTE pack. You get one of each, you know, a debugger and everything, get started. We've got the pack for the boron LTE. We've got the Boron 2G, 3G board. So this is a 2G, 3G cellular plus NRF52840 for mesh networking. Um, a lot of particle boards coming. Check those out, all feather compatible. We've got the PyScan for PyCom, some sensors and NFC RFID support for any PyCom board. We've got an update for the MicroPython LCD display. Um, now it looks like it's going to be compatible with the upcoming D series. Ada Box 10, if you missed out on the Rainbow Trellis, it's not too late. You can pick up this box and follow along with all the amazing musical projects that we've built. We've got some more JST cables. This one is an alligator clip to JST cable. So handy if you've got a stem aboard uh, with I2C. And as you can see here, connecting you know, a soil sensor with the stem connector to a Circuit Playground Express or maybe a micro bit. You also have the matching version of this cable. Um, so if you want to plug JSTs into it, you got those in three pin and four pin varieties. You also got an alligator clip version of the three pin cable as well. There's also an update to the Pimeroni Picade. Uh, you can plug, you know, plug in a Raspberry Pi 3, put this kit together, and it can connect to any HDMI screen, and you can run RetroPie, play retro games, or modern games if you like, um, using this handy uh, you know, uh, desktop or laptop controller. We've got a uh, fully assembled with headers, Feather M0 Wi-Fi. Stacking headers pre-assembled, so no solder required. And of course, coming into town, <laughs> <laughs> it's the Grand Central Metro M4, 70 pins, Cortex M4, 120 megahertz, one megabyte of flash, 256K of RAM, eight megabytes of SPI flash. It's got micro USB for programming and upload, runs CircuitPython, runs Arduino, power it from five to 12 volts, got a micro SD slot on there. I mean, it's got everything you could ever want. That and a bucket of chips. Okay. Grand Central. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, anything that's in stock, well, except for gift certificates in Adabox, use Create with CN that's celebrating the Cartoon Network. Announcement that we just did. Um, we got a top secret from the vault. Yeah. I want to show what we got. All right. Okay. So this is, this is coming soon. This is our CircuitPython 4 poster. So CircuitPython 4 is all about Bluetooth. Nordic was kind enough to let us use their logo for this poster. We got permission. Everything's cool. They even said it was okay. They, they loved it's it. Fine. They said the they, engineers are like, let's ask marketing. Marketing's like, okay, fine. Fine. So CircuitPython 4, the poster's coming soon. This is a preview of it. It looks good. I don't think you'll ever see a poster like this ever again. So okay. coming soon, sign up. We'll get yeah. these posters in to celebrate CircuitPython 4. So yeah, coming soon, I got this GPIO expander bonnet. Uh, one, of the, one of the cool things is, you know, we've done a ton of CircuitPython code last year some from summer through winter. We did a bunch of CircuitPython work to get libraries for all of our different CircuitPython libraries, all the libraries we've written for CircuitPython for all the chips into PyPI so that the Raspberry Pi can use them with Blinka, our compatibility layer. And it's worked out really well. And so it's actually much easier for me to uh, make uh, hardware for the Raspberry Pi now because I already have those libraries that I can build on. We've, uh, yeah, what is it, 125? 125. Libraries. At least. And so, you know, we've got a library for the GPA expander. So it's like, yeah, hey, yeah, whip up, uh, you know, a bonnet. And I know that the support is already built into Blinka. Uh, it's going to be ready to rock the moment the hardware's done. I also got, uh, did some e-experimentation. I know you saw that um, or from earlier in the show. So I thought, you know, maybe a feather wing, you know, an e-ink we feather wing. We were doing this and we're like, you know, it'd be kind of cool. Maybe it would be just plug something the, like this. Plug the feather wing into the back. You know, you could use one of those particle feather wings as well, uh, feathers, and uh, it gives you SD card and, uh, you know, the, the uh, tricolor um, e-ink display. And then um, we put SRAM on all our e-ink breakouts so you can use them even with um, this, the smaller chips that can't buffer the entire display in RAM. That's top secret. Back in the vault. It's totally not out yet.
Why are you even asking? Okay. Questions. We're going to answer those over on Discord. There was a couple that were queued up. Uh, I'll go and we'll scroll back. But in case you're wondering where it is, adafruit.it slash Discord. Okay. Um, I think Scott answered this one, but um, you can answer it. Um, does uh, touch work with the... Um, Grand Central. We don't Which have the Touch API working yet because it's not published by Microchip. And we, you know, we started doing a reverse engineering and then like it was different than the SAMD21, which is a little surprising. So we haven't done that. Um, but you can, you know, it's a fast chip. You can use like, you know, plain BitBang uh, capacitor touch where you just like, you know, have one pin toggle high with a 10 mega ohm resistor. Um, you know, if anybody is interested in, in looking to reverse engineering the, the 7051 touch library, it's different than the 21, but it should be possible for us to do. Do all the particles have headers? There are pros and cons, but I like stackers. They all have headers on them already, I believe. Um, and maybe soon there'll be versions that come without headers. So they have castellated pads. So it looks like they're, they will eventually have a version that you could solder stacking headers onto. Um, yeah, some people like to stack. Uh, you know, we got the tripler. You can use that and make side-by-sides. Uh, people like the triplers, and that's an easy way to get around the non-stacking. Okay, what's the best way to drive NeoPixels from live audio, like a VU meter? Probably five strips of uh, 20 dots. I was thinking Raspberry Pi 3 plus fake candy, but there's no audio in perhaps one of the M4 boards. Um, ooh, yeah, that's tough because, you know, if you want good audio input, um, you know, I know we have the audio library for the M4. Uh, you could try that. I know we've got a little bit of FFT work that we've also done with... Um, you know, uh, the SAMD21 boards in Arduino. CircuitPython won't be able to do that quite yet. So, yeah, you'd either you want to use Arduino and the Arduino library or FFT library, or you would use Raspberry Pi, but you'd have to get a USB microphone. Is it possible to access the QSPI flash for logging and such from C++ Arduino code on the M4 boards? Yes, the, we can. Check out the, you know, the Metro M4 has a page on it. It's not as beautifully supported as um, CircuitPython does, where it shows up as a disk drive when you plug it in and you can drag and drop files. But you can... Uh, read and write from the QSPI flash for data logging. Okay. Um, is it possible, uh, or maybe one day, to do RGB on e-ink displays? I think, you know, they, they keep saying that they'll, you know, they're trying to make RGB e-ink, but I think if you want RGB, I don't think it would look that great because, you know, you can't do color mixing. Um, you know, that you can, when we say it's tricolor, like red, black, white, we really mean you can either have... Um, you know, black dots, you can have red dots, or you can have no dots, and so it's white underneath. You can't mix red and black. You know, it, it does, you, you'd have, if you had RGB, you'd have red, green, blue, and white, and maybe black, but you wouldn't be able to make purple, for example. So okay. not, a good, not a good idea. There are um, sharp memory displays. I think they did make a couple that are RGB, but they don't look that good. Okay, someone wants this um, moment of Zener uh, photo that we did as a, uh, wrapped canvas print available for sale. I don't know. I guess we could maybe do that. I, maybe email me. I'll just send you the photo. Yeah, send me this photo. And, and you can you make can one. Make yeah. your own. That's With um, some geners. Okay. Uh, next thing, will circuit Python work with particle mesh mode? Actually, particle mesh is, is interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. It's not, it's not Bluetooth mesh. It's, it's, their, NRF. Own, it's their own Yeah, they, they're thing. using, um, I think... Uh, 15.4, 802.15.4 mesh. Yeah, Zig, um, it's like Zigbee or something. Is it possible for to work with? Uh, yeah, it's like Zigbee. Well, I don't, I don't. I, there's names, and I don't want to get get them wrong. But um, the particle mesh code, we, you know, it's not ported to Circuit Python. If somebody is interested in doing so, um, we have Circuit Python on the NRF52840, and um, it would be really interesting to see someone add support for it. But we don't have any plans to do so. I think if you're using the particle boards, you really want to use their software stack. I mean, they, they support it. It works with all of their gateways. It's going to be, like, way more solid than our attempts to make it work. All right. This is, like, the perfect question with the first answer. I'm new to CircuitPython. Where should I start? Learn.adafruit.com slash welcome dash to dash CircuitPython. We have the getting started guide with Welcome to Circuit Python right there. Katni wrote, and yeah. I mean, a lot of people contributed to you. I would suggest getting a Circuit Playground Express. Um, it's all you need. You don't need any additional hardware. You just need a micro USB cable. Plug it in and just follow along. And you can start doing stuff in Circuit Python. You'll, you'll be amazed at how much you can do. You'll whip through that guide, check out the essentials, and then uh, look at all the guides and projects that we've published on Learn. Um, there's now like easily 100 uh, that you can build. Okay, let's, uh, let's give something away. Let's give something away. It's trivia time. What do you want to give away? I thought I'd give away a cable. 
Really? Yo, yeah, well, this cable, right? All right, folks, you're going to get one of these. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't give away a cable. I wouldn't give away Grand Central. That's right. Fooled you. Yeah. You thought I was going to give away a cable. Yeah. Well, it's good. it is a nice cable. Don't get me wrong. But you're going to get a Grand Central. All what? you have to do is call the, f- call the phone number when it appears on the screen. The first person to call and answer the magical questions wins a Grand Central board, which is amazing and wonderful. And we're out of stock right now, so this is your chance to get one. Um, all I have to do is call the phone number. I'm going to pick it up and say, ahoy, ahoy. And uh, after I say, ahoy, ahoy, I'm gonna, you're going to say, ahoy, ahoy back. And then maybe turn down your computer audio. And then I'm going to ask you your name, where you're calling from, and a project you're working on or you want to work on this year. If you answer those questions, whoa. Nothing gets people going. Nothing gets it going like uh, a Grand Central. Dialing, like dialing, 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 dialing. Okay, I'm going to pick it up. Ready? Yeah. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Can you turn down your computer audio? Ahoy, ahoy. I'm like hearing myself. Hello. Hello. Okay, great. It's a person. Hi. Uh, hello. Welcome to the trivia question. Now you have to answer. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Marie, and I'm calling from Los Angeles, California. Okay, Marie from L.A. Well, congratulations. Uh, you were a fast dialer, and so you get a Grand Central M4 processor. Um, maybe we'll play the train whistle sound a little bit so we, we can celebrate. Toot, toot. Thank you. Um, all you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T at adafruit.com, and say, hey, it's Marie from L.A., and I want a product number 4064. 4064. Yep, that's the PID. That way they know exactly what you want. And uh, then you can build something cool with it. What's a project you're working on or you want to work on? Uh, I'm working on lots. I just finished up making the uh, little uh, worm bot. And then I'm going to work on the jumbo bot. I just love the cardboard uh, robot. Cardboard robots. Well, you're going to be able to build all sorts of cool robots with the Grand Central. And, of course, once you get it and you build stuff with it or with other stuff, come by the show and tell. Even if it doesn't have Adafruit parts in it, we'd love to see what you're working on. We have that every week at 730 before the show. And uh, we'd love to see you, what you're I'd working on. To. Okay. Well, right. congratulations. Don't forget to email support at Adafruit.com. Happy New Year, and congratulations on your fast dial-in. Oh, thank you so much. All thank right. you for all you guys do. Yeah, thank you for calling. Good night. Zoom. Right. Well, I was close. There was an L.A. woman involved. L.A. woman. You did say it, mate. Say L.A. woman earlier. That's right. So maybe you made it happen. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's the uh, that's the sound. We got to go. I don't even know what that is, but okay. <laughs> Some device. Just Ding dong. Yeah. Uh, um, well, we we did everything. We gave away. We had all the. D- it's not out yet. So, I mean, like yeah. we can't do this any is, more. This is a full show. This is a massive show. All right. Thank you, everybody out there. Um, Eight for team members. I think Takara is in Slack. Thank you, Takara. Thank you, uh, Thank you, everyone in the Eight for community, our remote team members, um, all the CircuitPython team members that are helping out here, everyone in the Discord chat tonight, everyone who's helping out and being good to each other. Um, we're here every single week. Um, I'll put the discount code one more time. It'll be up till midnight or so. Um, thanks for making this uh, some of the best hours we have every single week. We'll see everybody really soon. Um, stay tuned. More stuff's going on. And uh, once again, special thanks to everyone at Cartoon Network, Microsoft Make Code, and all the Adafruit team members that helped make this happen. We're really excited that all this is coming together. It's so cool. Go open source. I can't wait to see what all the cool kids are going to make. They're going to see some awesome projects. Okay. Here is your moment of Zener. Good night. <laughs>